you spell work? If so, why? Um, there isn't specifically a favourite type of day. Probably out of out of need, it would be when no one's around, um, or and that would probably be um, early, late at night, or or maybe early in the morning when people are asleep. So um, that would probably be the the time. It's when you can work uninterrupted, but any time of the day, you know, any any time of the hour is a witching hour. So. Are you solitary or do you work with the coven? Uh, no, I work with the coven. Um, I am the lady of my coven. So um, I am the high priestess of the circle of Heka. So I work in a coven. Uh, I do do workings by myself. So maybe let's say I'm solitary and I work in a coven. Um, if you could pick a certain witchcraft tradition that fits your practice, um, what would it be? Druid, Celtic, um, Celtic Witcher, etc. Um, I would say that it is um, Celtic, Druid, Egyptian. Um, and um, and I don't feel that they're dissimilar in, in, in any way, really. Um, what was the most creative spell that you've ever done um, and what did you use? I am um, quite creative with my spells. Um, so there's not one thing that felt the most creative thing. But whatever, you, whatever you've got, it's... Um, the witch needs to be versatile, so you can use what you've got around you. So um, nothing in particular comes to mind that oh, that was really creative. Um, so um, yeah. Um, what do you prefer for divination? Um, I like the runes, um, and uh, so I use them quite often. And um, I do like. Um, um, oracle cards. I have uh, a set of oracle cards, well enough, um, that is to, to do with Isis. Um, and um, I'm not sure what they're called. Isis oracle cards, I think. Uh, and I like those. They're quite they're quite nice and quite insightful. Um, uh, yeah, but mainly the runes um, are my go-to. And the magic eight ball. I think that's fun. So I've used the magic eight ball a couple of times as well. <laughs> yeah. What are some ways to keep yourself grounded? Uh, I think as a person I'm quite even tempered anyway and, and grounded. Um, but I would take my shoes off and go um, and put my feet on the ground to literally ground myself. Um, I would also maybe just relax and just try and centre and and what's the technique where, where you pretend there's roots that are going down into the ground and just hooking into the ground and, and, and um, making you feel like you're you're stable and steady. Um, so that would be that would be uh, two ways of doing that. Have you ever had a spell go horribly wrong? No. No. Uh, what are your opinions on initiation rituals? I love them. They're awesome. Um, okay. Um, so as, as the fact that I'm in a coven and I am the, the high priestess of a coven, so I do believe in, in initiation rituals. Um, and so as you know, initiation means beginning. So you are initiated into a coven, so you begin in a coven. That doesn't necessarily mean that you um, were not a witch beforehand. I know many people will probably go, oh my god, um, but um, it has come to my attention over the years uh, that people are witches long before they are initiated. Um, let's say that 
you need to become that thing before you go through that that ritual to to say officially that you are a witch. Um, that needs to, it's it's another step, um, and it's a it's an ongoing process. And many people who are actually witches are witches before they're initiated. Um, I'm not sure whether I'm explaining that that correctly. Um, so initiation. Um, to me is is a great thing it's a it's a marking of a of a rite of passage and um, initiation comes in different forms um, so you have um, initiation into a coven now when you're initiated into a coven um, it is you, you're putting yourself under a, under a stress under a, um, a challenge and You yourself don't really put yourself under the same kind of challenge that you would face if someone else did. It's the same as um, you go and you start an exercise um, regime. You're not going to push yourself as hard as if you say you had a personal trainer and that personal trainer started to push you and said, no, you can go a little bit more, a little bit more, and you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to go a little bit more. If you're doing it yourself, you don't actually push yourself as much. So initiation is that same thing, it's taking you over that threshold, it's finding out, or helping you find out who you actually are. So there's uh, black cockatoos that have just um, gone past, and someone in a motorbike, so it's all, it's all go here. Uh, so you don't um, put yourself under that same stress that you would um, say if someone else was, was, was um, helping you to perform that. Um, the initiation. But initiation can take many forms. Um, I have been initiated for um, quite a few um, years. Um, I can't remember how many now, I think. Anyway, um, my mind's going a little bit old. Um, but before that, I was a witch, before I was initiated into a coven. Um, I was practicing um, witchcraft for f since I was in primary school. Um, I didn't know that that's what it was actually. It was just my little thing. Um, but um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm rambling a little bit um, about this. But um, so initiation, good. Um, it helps you to find out who you are, and initiation is designed to open up. Um, doorways within your subconscious and again there's those are things that can't be done by yourself very easily yes they can be done but it's not something that is um, is easily done by the person themselves they need help they need help to be initiated um, have you ever had full contact with your deity if so what happened full contact um, it's a, first the image that came up was like full contact sports where your deity just gives you a hip and shoulder um, uh, <laughs> um, I don't see um, deity as a, a person that I can have full contact with uh, I, hmm, I don't know how, how to explain this I have I do have had um, conversations, but they would, they would be in dreams. They wouldn't actually be, um, say, me sitting where I am now and suddenly um, Hecate walks up. Um, it's, not, it's not like that. Um, and um, I'm sure other people have had something that it's been like a full contact where the, uh, the goddess has just come and, and spoken to you. But I find that um, deity um, moves in mysterious ways and will speak through people. Will, will, um, uh, you will suddenly pick up a book and the words or the, the idea that you just, just wanted will be in those, those first few lines that you, you read. Um, I don't... Um, and that's because maybe I haven't experienced it, but I haven't had deity just come up and walk up and say, how are you going? All right, so, um, yeah. What about you is unwitchy? 
Um, uh, it, it, I think it depends on what you, what you would define as what's witchy and what's not witchy. Um, I would say the way I dress is not witchy. Um, and yeah, maybe the way I dress isn't witchy. <laughs> How do I tell a new love interest that I am a witch? <sighs> Most of the time I don't say anything unless I really like them and I can see something that's, that's, um, that's uh, going to uh, eventuate. Um, now with that said, I've been with my boyfriend for over four years now. And what did I do? Uh, I didn't tell him straight up. I didn't like introduce myself like, hi, how are you going? I'm a witch. Uh, I, I don't do that normally, so I don't think that I would do that um, when, I'm, when I'm talking to someone that I, that I like. Um, so um, it would just be that I would, um, I would wait until I found that they were um, someone that I actually thought we could spend a little bit more time together uh, and that I liked enough to to share that part of myself with. Um, and I would also probably have a few little pointed questions to find out whether they were um, conducive to, to what I was doing. Who is a past witch that has inspired you, um, rather famous or not? Um, past witch that is this. There is a witch, and maybe if she watches this she'll go, oh my god. Um, there is a witch that when I was um, just starting out being a part of a coven and not being um, part of my own my own little thing, um, there was a, a witch that, that um, I, I liked and, and she inspired me and that was uh, Priestess Celine. So um, I think she was one of my, my favourites when I was uh, I don't know, growing up through the coven ranks. Uh, so she inspired me. She, um, she was down to earth, but she was also had that, that, uh, that, witchy, that witchy vibe that everyone likes and it was mysterious. But I think the fact that she was down to earth was the, the thing that I, I liked the most. And she, she, she held us. I'm speaking in the past tense only because um, it's been a while since I've, I've talked to her, but um, she's always held herself um, in the highest, highest manner and uh, she was the one that said, if you want to be a priestess, that's what you need to aspire to, that's what you need to look like. Um, um, and uh, yeah, so my inspiration. How do you handle rejection from a fellow witch that refuses to do a reading or spell for you? I've never asked someone to do a spell for me. If you can't do it yourself, then, then it's probably not worth doing or you shouldn't be doing it. Um, and um, I'm, I'm not big at getting people to do divination for me. Um, I have had a few. Um, 